So I normally don't make videos about current matters, but in the last week here there has been quite a lot of controversy and heat and discussion and unclarity regarding the new hand setting rules, or maybe they're not new rules, but new guidelines on how to interpret the already existing rules. So I thought I would make a video about this in case there's someone out there that cares. I'm gonna try to weave in also some learning moments into this and uh, also if I would be super lucky, maybe even some clarity from FIVB officials, if this video would make it that far. Okay, so what has happened is basically just a guideline that has told reps to follow the rules more closely. And the rules have for years been that the ball cannot move in two different directions while it is in the hands when you handset. So it cannot move downwards and then upwards or one direction and then another direction. Also, it cannot come to a full visible stop. So, I made a video earlier, a hand setting tutorial, where I talk about a specific effect, which is that there is still a type of softness in the beach volleyball handset, which can be attained by some parts of the body um, taking off, actually going downwards with the ball while some other parts that move the ball in more inches or centimeters simultaneously move the ball upwards so that there's a part, for example, the fingers uh, absorb the ball but if the whole hand package and my whole body moves upwards at the same time sort of more or faster than the fingers go downwards then the net total movement of the ball will still only be in an outwards direction. So one thing that I think is important when we talk about this is that everyone's going to have different opinions and these opinions are going to be heavily based on our own experience and how we do it ourselves and probably the people that that do it in a more lifty way that are on the you know on the border to, to getting called now with these new guidelines they're going to be more critical to this whereas some some quicker setters they're going to be more positive to this but i think in the in this discussion we need to remember that we need to try to put ourselves to the side and talk about what is the best for the sport so what i believe is that the sport we need uh, we need to not kill a sport that is already struggling financially even more by enforcing rules that make it less interesting to watch. So what do I mean with that? Mostly I'm referring to that I believe this sport gets interesting to watch when there is almost like a magical connection between players and partners. When it's very fun to watch rallies where it's like they have a non-verbal communication they just know where they're gonna put the ball and and set like outside sets and whatnot super quickly and it just works out i hope you recognize what i mean by saying this and i believe so if anyone disagrees with what i'm gonna say next please comment below because i want to discuss this further with you but i believe that if we let the wrists go downwards also a little bit but at the same time the net total sum of the ball is going outwards i'll show a video of that here i believe that this strictness of the handset allows for more of this connection interconnection between partners to happen because it is easier for the attacker to read the setter and see where they are intending to set the ball. Now, there's another technique which is a little bit less lifter, and I believe this is what really good indoor setters do. They basically, for them, it's only the fingers that, uh, that absorb the ball, and the wrists and everything else in the body is going outwards. So rather than, for example, the shoulders and elbows and legs going upwards, but wrists and fingers absorbing, always creating a net total sum of outward movement on the ball. Rather than that, it's actually even less so. So it's only the wrists already work their way out and it's only the fingers absorbing the ball. And here's a video of me attempting to do this technique.
Anyway, so I believe that this more indoorish technique, this is my belief, removes a little bit of this readability for the partner to see where the set is going to go and that this will make the sport less exciting to watch. Now, I hope that if there's some indoor players that, <laughs> but the thing is in the indoor we're supposed to disguise where we are setting. Uh, but I hope if there's some indoor players that disagree with me here, that say that you can still have this connection between players in beach volleyball. We're not talking about indoor here where there's no wind, there's no sun, there's nothing. But in beach volleyball, please let me know in the comments below. Anyway, I think it would be stupid to go so strict with the lifting rule that this sort of connection and this sort of body language show where you're gonna set to your partner is gonna be destroyed. Another thing is, I have to <laughs> say my, my fellow Swedes, uh, David Allman and, um, and Jonathan Helvig, uh, their jump setting also is exciting to watch. For fans, for people that don't know anything about volleyball, for people that know lots of volleyball, for people that have been playing volleyball for all of their lives, I believe most people think that this is exciting and fun to watch. According to me, when the ball lands in their hands, it only moves in one direction. So it's not like they're taking it in and then shoving it the other way. But they surely are hand setting it to the side in there. And this also goes for the, uh, for the close to the net sets. So if there was a net here running this way, and, and my partner serve receives and the ball comes very close to the net. Sometimes I have to go with my chest towards the net and hands it to the side. Because if I stood like this, then my elbow would be hitting the net. I think we should also not make rules so strict that this becomes an illegal move because this is also a finesse move that is fun to watch. So with all of that said, my personal opinion is that these guidelines are a welcome thing because the rules, the way they have been written, hasn't been followed super strictly and well uh, for quite some time now and there has been people that have been taking the ball down or coming to a full stop and then hand setting and getting away with that. And now I know that there's regions and times where, time frames of beach volleyball history where that has been good and I'm not gonna go into that. I believe there's Again, if we're talking purely from a uh, performance standpoint, I believe there's an aspect of for people that take the ball down and then handset that they sort of uh, uh, trick their partner with the timing for their attack and approach. But put that aside, I think this is a welcome <laughs> guideline update. But I would like some clarity to understand if it's a push towards like full-on indoor hand setting where basically only the fingers go down and not really even the wrists or if it's just just a guideline to make sure that the the <laughs> net some movement of the ball is outwards so me personally my own hand setting technique before all of this happened has been i believe for most of the time has been a net some outwards but from also the wrists going down like this one and actually all of this ended up in me experimenting a little bit and finding a new way to handset that I haven't committed to yet. I hope I don't need to, but I, I believe I could change to this technique, which would be more only the fingers absorbing the ball and which I believe is closer to a good indoor set. But I was thinking if I'm super lucky, uh, maybe even these video examples of my old technique and my new technique would provide like a visual that maybe even FIVB officials could say, yes, we want it this strict as the second one, or no, the first one is strict enough, or even no, it's, it's even stricter than both of these. And in that case, well, then I need to start learning some new tricks here. <laughs> but, but that is that. But I hope that these visuals, well, are something to refer back to.
So that was basically it. Thanks for watching. I hope that uh, something good will come out of this. I also hope that whoever has to learn something new because of this uh, guideline changes that you tackle it with uh, grace and an optimism that new skills are possible to learn. I literally, uh, <laughs> I literally didn't think I could handset quicker than my old technique. Uh, but today, just pushed by this whole thing, I spent five, 10 minutes experimenting a little bit and all of a sudden I did find a quicker technique. So change is possible. It is possible to learn things. It doesn't need to be all doom and gloom and the end of your hand setting. There are usually solutions to be found. All right, thanks for watching. Share this to someone if you think there's someone out there that should see this. I'm Alex from the Learn Beach Little Fast Project and I hope I see you again sometime.